everyone. Sorry it took me so long to actually get the first video out. Um, lots of stuff going on, as you all know. <clears throat> first, I'd like to start off with prayer. Um, I think that's the best way to start a Bible study. Uh, Lord Jesus, help us um, with any of these issues that we have, that you will help us understand them and take care of them and address them the way you want us to and help us all to get something out of this study in Jesus name amen so first off sorry about my appearance I uh, was in the Sun a little too long so my skin is burning right now it's obviously very red um, so first off uh, get it's good that if you guys get your own Bible. Mine is an NIV study Bible, which I absolutely love. I love the footnotes and everything that it has in it. And then, if you don't have this book, um, I recommend it. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I think it was about eight bucks. Um, this is the series we'll be doing. And hopefully, we will get through it but take our time at the same time I start decided to start out with handling stress because well our whole world is in a crisis right now and it's I don't know about you guys but for me it's <clears throat> definitely been a struggle um, to stay focused on God and what he wants rather than worrying about everything else that goes on around around us so first off um, let's uh, read our book um, and you're welcome to take notes rewind um, whatever you need to do to uh, get through this if I don't if you don't understand something please um, leave me comments and if I can answer them I will if I can't I'll look it up so, on page 13, or page 15, excuse me, um, June Hunt gives an example of someone who was stressed out, and that was Abraham Lincoln. Um, the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, was a man universally known to be no stranger to stress. He repeatedly pulled, um, it repeatedly pulled him down to the depths of despair. I'm sure we can all relate to that one. Lincoln grew up with stress as a constant companion, emotionally troubling him and eventually enveloping him. An impoverished and tra tra tragic childhood, marked by the details of his mother, aunt, uncle, and beloved sister, as well as the neglect of an emotionally absent father. And we have a lot of that, especially in our country. This proved to be the stressful opening chapter to a life that would be punctuated by pain and anguish. As an adult, melancholy became a companion, a common word to describe Lincoln's demeanor. He lived in a state of sadness that drew both attention and sympathy of those around him. Um, for me, sometimes I often wonder if my depression or the way I'm feeling is bringing out false pity or false um, support from people. But usually that is Satan talking to me and telling me I'm worthless, that I deserve this stress, all this negativity that you know is not, not coming from God at all. So I have to constantly keep my thoughts in check and make sure that Satan's not getting a hold of them. So first off in this session, we're going to look at the definitions of stress what the difference between unhealthy stress is and stress from a biblical point of view. So the Apostle Paul also was no stranger to stress. Um, in his letter to the Corinthians, he describes numerous external circumstances and eternal struggles that caused a great deal of pressure, pressure in his life. Yet despite all of this stress, he knew what to do with it. He knew he could turn to the Lord and receive his help and grace for any situation. So, I want you to pause, if you can, and read uh, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 31 
and write down what stresses Paul was facing when he wrote these words. After that, also look at 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, and see how Paul handled his stress, what he did, what did he do with it, and how did God respond to him. After that, I will come right back. All right, so hopefully you guys had a chance to read that. Um, I'll just go over it briefly. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, 23-31, um, Paul states, Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the Leha sorry, <laughs> in danger in the city, in danger in the country. Basically, he's been in danger no matter where he goes because of his beliefs. So, how does Paul handle this? God said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is Second uh, Corinthians 12, verse 9 through 10. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. A lot of people, well, the way the world usually works is, you know, the way evolution has put it, um, you know, um, the weakest are, you know, never going to, they won't get any higher than what they are. And um, it's not right because weakness actually shows strength especially if you have God on your side. So, let's define stress. Stress is external pressure causing physical, mental, or emotional strain. Like when Paul was stoned, shipwrecked, um, beaten down, whipped, you name it, that is very stressful, especially to someone's body and mind and soul. Um... Self-induced internal pressure, causing physical, mental, or emotional, or spiritual strain. I, this example here that they give is a great example because I happen to be a perfectionist. So I know that this video isn't perfect. And I, um, my perfectionist part of me is coming out going, oh, you suck at this video. You aren't doing what you should be. You're saying too many ums. You're not looking at the camera enough. That's Satan talking to me and telling me I'm not good enough when I know that I am because I have God and he strengthens me. But um, my confidence isn't as well as it should be. And I'm hoping through these Bible studies that we all go through and discuss together that my confidence will grow. So internal resistance is such such as the stress in my lower back was caused by lifting heavy boxes. Now I have a bad back. I um, have degenerative disc disease and I have a bulging disc. So if I sit too long, stand too long, things like that, it stresses me. It stresses my body. Um, it it all it's always in constant pain. And I'm learning to deal with that type of stress on a daily basis. And it's not pleasant. Not at all. Uh, negative pressure resulting in de-stress, danger, or destruction. An example, the stress from many harsh winters destroyed the fruit trees in my backyard. Um, right now we have deer eating our fruit trees and our blueberry bushes and our blackberry bushes. And, um, and it's... You know, we would like to have some of that, but apparently the deer want, want it more. So, right now, until we figure out how to keep the deer out of our yard, we're just going to let them eat it. 
So positive pressure, producing motivation and movement, um, like the stress of needing to support your family um, to get a better, so you decided to get a better job. Well, my husband's a great example for that. He went from a job at Ross to a security job. And he gets better hours, better pay, and he's much happier than he was when he was working at Ross. So those are the various different types of stress. So now we come to writing from the heart. So what stresses you out? Well, like I said, I'm a perfectionist. So things not going exactly my way drives me insane. Crooked pictures stresses me out. Um, I have a hard time opening up to people about certain things because I've been teased, um, hurt. I've had many people, um, invalidate my feelings. Uh, and that's really hard to go through. It really is, especially when no one really believes you or they don't want to believe you. Or they just don't care. And, and a lack of caring is really hard on, on anyone, really. So the first positive step that we need to take is opening up to God about our stress, which I try to do on a daily basis. And for me, I find that before bed, I will get my tablet or my phone and I will read uh, the Bible through the BibleGateway.com site. It's a wonderful site, and I'll put it in the links below. Um, it gives you tons of study material, um, ways to start studying certain chapters, uh, and gives you various translations, which is really nice, too, if you don't understand, like, the King James Version, you can go to the NIV or a different one. Um, so now we need to go over to Matthew, which will take me a minute, but I will get there as soon as I can. Um, probably I will be much better prepared in the next one. So we read chapter 11, 28 through 30, which says, uh, Twenty-eight through thirty. My pages don't want to work. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's Jesus talking. And I have noticed... Over time, when I give my burdens, my emotions, and everything that I'm feeling that causes chaos directly to God through Jesus, I am happier, I'm less stressed, and I know that God is there for me and my family. And it it's much better, really when you let God take control of your life instead of letting your flesh, yourself, decide what you should and shouldn't do. Giving it over, giving your whole life over to God is a profound, freeing feeling. So now we need to name some positive and negative pressures or stress, stresses in our life. Well, I have two kids, one of them is special needs. And she takes a lot of energy, a lot of time. Um, she, my, my children are eight years apart, so that can cause rifts between the two of them. Um, we recently bought a house, so we're finding new things that, you know, we didn't know when we bought the house, which is typical. It's house built in 53, so there's bound to be problems. Um... I I have a lot of health problems myself. I'm overweight. Um, that causes my diabetes to get out of control. Um, I have to watch what I eat 
and make sure that I don't eat too much sugar, too many carbs, and that's pretty stressful considering the world we live in and the types of food that are available to us, especially now. It's getting even harder to eat healthy with protein getting so high at the store and really finding stuff that if you really looked at the labels, you probably would not want to eat it in the first place. So positive pressures. Um, God has been pressuring me to do this, which has stressed me out a little bit, but I know he wants me to get out of my comfort zone. So this is what I am attempting to do, and I'm hoping that good will come out of it for everyone involved, including myself. I'm hoping that by doing these Bible studies with you that we can have conversations on and even debates as long as they're not argumentative but good well-found strong debates on different subjects and different ways of how each person handles things um, more positive pressures well, we have lots of animals, and the last one that entered in our family was a stray cat, and his name is Bo, and he just decided that he was going to adopt us whether we wanted him or not. So he goes in and out of the house all the time, and he causes a ruckus. He's kind of a kitten. Um, he's always getting after my one-year-old um, cat, who absolutely can't stand it. Um, currently we're fighting fleas because of him. So yeah, he, he's a positive and a negative pressure at the same time. He's wonderfully loving. He's beautiful. He's very fluffy and, um, he brings us delight. On the other hand, he also brings us stress. Um, you know, we have to buy extra cat food, extra litter, make sure that everybody, all of them are defleed. It's, it's a lot to put on you especially you know when you're trying to take care of a family and you just bought a house and you don't know where everything is yet it's uh it's hard sometimes but it's worth it uh ever since we moved into this house I'm cooking more um because I have a little bit of a bigger family a couple family members moved in with us so I make sure that we're all fed every day and we all do chores together um, work as a family on the house and whatnot you know and with kids of course what sometimes they're great and they do a great job other times it's impossible to get them to move I'm sure you guys can relate to that as a parent um, so you know there are many many positive pressures negative pressures um, I think one of the positive ones was me going to school for a while to college and um, that helped me gain more confidence I learned a ton because I was in a psychology class and I was working on becoming a counselor but then the negative pressure that came along was the school decided to tell me that I owed them something that I allegedly they allegedly said I did and I didn't there was a big huge miscommunication but because always look at the fine print and make sure you record your conversations with some of these people because they really messed me up to the point where I was five classes away to getting my BA in social work slash psychology and I can't anymore and even if I did I couldn't work because of my physical disability so you know and I'm sure many of you have lots of positive things lots of negative things that you could tell me about and please feel free to share because I would I would love to hear how you all deal with those types of pressures whether good or bad so on healthy stress um, June Hunt says, Anna Mays Rutledge, a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, lovely young woman, was the apple of Abraham Lincoln's eye. She was the picture of health until an epidemic swept through rural Illinois. Anna became debilitated with what doctors then described as 
bilious fever. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. If I didn't, let me know. Lincoln tended to the sick, built coffins, and assisted with burials. When Anna became sick, the health crisis became personal and distressing. Of course, he loved her. Lincoln regularly visited Anna's bedside. Stress came at Lincoln from seemingly all sides for months. Prior to the epidemic, his nerves were frazzled from his obsessive day and night study of law. And I could see how law would be very, very stressful. There are so many things that are involved in that type of career. I can't imagine nobody being stressed about it in the first place. Uh, Lincoln put his own health at risk through personal neglect. And I think a lot of us can agree that we've done that to ourselves many times because we're so focused on everybody else, and especially the ones we love, that we completely forget ourselves. And that is not healthy. Um, this led to an emancipated appearance. One resident commented his best friends were afraid that he would craze himself, make himself deranged, and sadly their fears ultimately came true. In August of 1835, the untimely death of Anna Rutledge dealt the final blow to Lincoln's fragile emotional and mental states. He was already battered and bruised by unhealthy stress. After her death, he became unstable. And I can relate to that when I lost my father when I was 10. And I blamed God every minute for it. And I believe I mentioned this in the introduction video. I was petrified of losing my father because he was always sick, and when he did, I didn't know how to handle it. Of course, I was a child, and it devastated me. Um, on the cold and wet day of Anna's funeral, Lincoln was distressed about rain falling on her grave. The cold, gloomy weather was detrimental to his emotional health throughout his life. It often served as the culminating factor that pushed him over the edge. He once wrote that bad weather had proved to be very severe on defective nerves, and I agree. Case in point, I live in the Pacific Northwest. Rain, rain, rain. Um, and my body tends to react to the barometric pressure. So when it's raining, my mood is that way. It's depressing. When it's nice and sunny outside, I'm a lot happier and more positive. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes I can't help it. And sometimes I'm not even conscious of how I'm reacting or speaking or my tone of voice to people or even my words, what I'm really trying to say. Because I can be sarcastic. I can be, I'm very blunt and I can be very honest. And sometimes it sounds like I'm being a prude when I'm not trying to be that way, but some people take it that way. So following Anna's death, Lincoln was seen wandering in nearby woods, gun in hand, admittedly contemplating suicide. His friends had to literally lock him up inside their home to prevent him from killing himself. That's pretty major. People began to murmur one word about Lincoln's crazy. Unhealthy stress refers more to the duration of stress over a considerable period of time. So, um, example, someone being homeless and they have no idea where their next meal or their next form of shelter is going to be. That's a pretty consider considerable amount of stress right there alone. It, this includes external or internal pressure that God does not intend for us to experience. We weren't made to experience pain and suffering and all this. That happened when sin came into the world. And that came in because of poor choices that led to God cursing the earth that we were on. And we went from walking with God in the garden and being happy and like God in that sense to being mortal and having to die and go through horrible pain sometimes. And that was because of choices that were made. Um, causes of detrimental effects to the body, soul, and spirit. That's what unhealthy stress can do. It stresses, stresses, I'm sorry, I'm, um, I have some cotton mouth today. Um, 
It stretch, stretches us beyond the threshold of our physical, mental, and emotional limits that God established within us to protect from overload. It also plunges us past the saturation point where nothing can be added without something else being eliminated. And I've been to that point. I've been to the point of such high stress that any even remotely tiny thing that was added on top of it would send me over. Um, this whole COVID virus rioting thing that's been going on, you know, it's stressful, especially for someone who has a family and, you know, they would do anything at all costs to keep them safe. And it's even harder for me because I have a special needs child and I don't want my child to go through that type of craziness, but I know it's eventually going to happen. So I have to learn how to deal with stress myself in order to keep her from stressing out as much. And we all know it's bound to happen, unfortunately. So now we get to write from the heart. We read how the Bible um, describes stress in Psalm 22.1 with David. So Psalm 22.1 in Psalms is my favorite book of the Bible. I absolutely love it. I could read it for the rest of my life over and over again every day. 22.1, which says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Um... Obviously, David at the time was very stressed out. Things were happening in his life that weren't going according to plan, and he felt that God had forsaken him. But he didn't. David forsake God, or forsook God. And that's what a lot of us do when we're in a stressful situation, and we think we can handle it ourselves. Instead of giving our, our burdens up to God, we try to fix it ourselves. Sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't. But God ultimately gives us the strength and encouragement and support to be able to figure it out and do what's needed. So, reviewing the explanation of what unhealthy stress does to us, um, in your own terms, describe... You or anyone you know and list specific ways you've seen unhealthy stress have a negative impact on you or someone you know. And I'd love to hear those comments. Um, and we can discuss them the on the next video. You know, um, there are so many different types of stress. And what stress for someone can be nothing to somebody else. Um because we are so individual and we have completely different personalities and that's what God intended with free will. He didn't want us to be robots. That would be pretty boring and why would he want to create something that doesn't truly love him back but that's just required to love him back. It's kind of like what's all what all this baloney that's going on in the world right now. We're being forced to do things that we don't want to do against our free will. And for the most part, most of us are going to react in a forceful way because who wants their freedom taken away? Uh, who wants to be told that they can and can't go somewhere or can and can't, you know, be out in public and have to wear these masks all the time? And believe me, I've made them and I've made them for people. Um... And though a lot of people think that they don't work, in a sense, yes, they do. Because it keeps others from spewing stuff all over you or you on them. And that's how the, this whole stressful situation was started. It got out, someone caught it, someone coughed, and it went around the globe. And that is probably one of the most stressful things we are all dealing with right now is our whole lives have been turned upside down and 
our way of life has been completely destroyed and now we're having to learn new ways of survival and new ways of coping with things that we never thought we'd have to deal with that usually only third world countries would deal with. So yeah, our country is in great stress and we all need to deal with it. So I'm going to stop here and I will do part two the next time. But, and I will hopefully be better prepared. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, please leave them down below. Um, subscribe to my channel and uh, let other people know if they're interested or if you think that this might be helpful for someone else. And hit the note that notification bell. And I will see you guys next time.